Years have passed since the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, but political incitement is still strong. So says Rabbi Dov Lipman, a former MK from Yesh Atid, who has just co-authored a book on the assassination called Words Can Kill. He spoke with IBA News. I came across a book that was written by a former Shin Bet agent named Devir Kariv, written in Hebrew, about the fact that he was together with Yigal Amir, the assassin of Yitzhak Rabin, for the few days following the assassination, and that he made the decision to kill Yigal Amir. He made a, a, a well-thought-out decision. The right thing to do for Israel is for me to kill Yigal Amir. Uh, the title of the book is Words Can Kill, the lead-up to the assassination and how leaders who had no intention to inspire violence, they were not going to be violent themselves, but the political climate and the atmosphere in the country that was established by the top created a situation where a crazy person could feel justified in killing a prime minister. And I was reading these messages and just the whole lead up to the story, uh, the personal side, the emotions, the passion, the political elements, and I thought to myself, this applies today. So what's your contribution to the book? Did you just translate it or did you change it? Yes, I changed it. It's adapted. I, I took the book uh, as Devere wrote it, but adapted it to an English-speaking population and rewrote it uh, in my own words. There are parts of the narrative which are Devere's direct words translated because of the power of the first-person account of, I, I took my hand, I put it on the gun, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it, my goal was that it should be appealing to an English-speaking audience. They could relate to it, so it's very much adapted, and I retold the story and repackaged it in a different way than he wrote it in Hebrew. I did add two other chapters uh, okay. to the book. One chapter is about religion and state in Israel. The other chapter, though, is the lessons for today. The lessons for today. We just went through an election campaign in the United States where there was rhetoric like we've never seen before. And I went back and studied, and I went back and I studied past election campaigns. There's always been strong passions, but the rhetoric that's been used on both sides uh, was at an all-time high. And now we're post-inauguration. I'm not taking any sides in the American election. I didn't take any sides. I didn't have a vote. But there's been a democratically elected president. Now what will the rhetoric be like on both sides? You had a demonstration against the inauguration. That's legitimate. You can have a demonstration. And we believe in freedom of speech. But when I saw a, a very popular figure stand up in that demonstration and say, I've thought about blowing up the White House. That terminology, that pop star is not going to blow up the White House or hurt anyone. But there are crazy people out there who hear that terminology, who hear someone they admire as a musician, as a rock star saying that, someone who is very much against the sitting president. Those are the kinds of terminologies which can lead a crazy person to do something terribly horrible and break the rules of democracy. How, how is this book being received in, in Amazon? Is it 21 years after the assassination? Why is this interesting? It, it's amazing for me to see that uh, when we got the reports from Amazon that it's number one in numerous categories on Amazon. Amazon is a, a site that sells millions <laughs> of books a day. And it's number one. Uh, clearly it's touching a chord. Um, are we seeing some of this sort of hatred, this incitement now in this present day? When you have a leader come out and talk about Arabs coming in droves to vote, correct, that's not a call to violence at all, and I agree with that. But that's creating an atmosphere in a country of group against group, of population against population. And there was an apology afterwards for it, but again, we have to be so careful in how we talk. That we are a democracy in Israel, and we're proud of that. But we live in a country where the issues are filled with passion, uh, issues of life and death on both sides of the equation. And the call from this book is that leaders, both in Israel and around the world, have to be cautious in the words that they use. Because I'll tell you, Yigal Amir, the assassin of Prime Minister Rabin, told Dvir Kariv, Dvir asked him, how do you think you'd be received out in the broader public? And he said, I'd be a hero.